Cinco de Mayo. Super fun, bright colored kit. I love it. And we haven't done anything like it before, but it will be very fun for me. Um, we have our fillable little mini pinatas. You can fill those if you would like. They're very, very, very cute. Here's our gnome sign and the shaker. So you can make that. Um, this piece can also be decoupaged on the back with the paper included if you want some bright, fun colors on the back side. Um, just easily stenciling. We've shown how to stencil. Um, the margarita recipe, your stencil looks a little bit different. I had it modified between the time that I released the box and I did this. Um, it was a little bit harder to read and I wanted it to be nice and clear because <laughs> this is a real true stencil. Or, I mean, not stencil, obviously it's a real stencil. It's a real true recipe. So this is my mom's recipe, her famous margarita recipe. Everybody always asks for it. Um, but the trick she always said is the beer. So the beer like tones it down. So don't forget the beer in there, but go ahead and give it a try and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear about your thoughts on my mom's margarita recipe. So that's a pretty super fun um, functional piece. Like it's a real recipe for your Cinco de Mayo festivities. So this sign, super easy painted, and then use the dabble method. Um, the stipple method to paint those laser cut pieces. Same here with the let's talk about. Um, this piece, stipple down your paint and then set it in some Mod Podge. Um, paint some Mod Podge on the table and then if you just place this taco about in it, it'll coat the back with glue and then you can just place it right on. So easy way, these little guys just assemble that way. They can maybe, if they're uneven, just press them down further. They're not pressed all the way down if they're falling over. So just press them down so they're even. Um, the garland, the pom-pom garlands are already um, strung for you. You can restring them, use them in different places that you'd like. These little salt, tequila, and lime. Oh my gosh, so cute. And a little, of course, mini sombrero. So there is your Cinco de Mayo kit. Okay, for painting this teeny tiny little talk about word, it's easiest if you just set it down on paper, start dabbing paint onto it. Use the stipple method, straight down from above your paint and go straight down from above with paint on your brush. Then once it's done, move it, move it from there while it's wet and set it either up against something. I think I could set it right up against that so it can dry and then it won't stick to anything. And that is the easiest way to paint those little tiny fragile words. Okay, to get these little tiny fragile words attached to your sign without having big globs of glue behind, so I'm back on the Taco Bell word, um, I took Mod Podge or any kind of glue, spread some out on the paper that on any kind of paper that you have. Then it covered it with Mod Podge and then place it on your sign. Just like that. So then you won't have the hot glue marks. You won't have anything behind it. So there's how you can easily attach just using a splotch of glue and paintbrush, set your word in the glue and then stick it on the sign.
Okay, everything on the Mother's Father's Day is reversible. So you'll use the same photo cube. Easiest way to get pictures printed is I just send them, I use a program to lay out my size of pictures. So I think I did two and a half inch or two and three quarter inch pictures by two and three quarter inch. So I put two pictures on one four by five size layout. I did that on Canva. You can always use Canva to lay out your pictures. Then I uploaded those pictures to Walgreens. And so I actually printed two pictures in the right size on one four by five photo. Then I just went to Walgreens one hour and picked them up. So there's our little photo block. Um, I can stick the flowers in there. <clears throat> you can stick anything you want in there. You know, they always go get you your little, um, the lovely dandelions the kids always pick for you. Those would be fun to put in there. Just put a little jar in there with water and you can have real flowers. It is open-ended, so it doesn't have a base. So you can stick whatever you want in there. Um, everything's reversible, like I just said. So the little heart shape, this was really hard to decide what to do for these but kind of just a two heart shape you can be generic if you don't want to do a mother or father day side whatever you can just do one side um all these can be single sided or double side if you don't want to use one of the um themes you don't have to but these ones make sure there's two mother's father's day stencils in the kit the um, mom heart of the family and ain't no hood like fatherhood um, stencil on the main piece is the incorrect size for this block so this is actually a four and a half by five and a half inch block the stencil on the main is the wrong one we inserted another second stencil and it says on it use this stencil for the four and a half by five and a half block that's this mom heart of the family block Here's the Happy Mother's Day sign and reversible, the Happy Father's Day. The Straight Out of Patience Mom Life, Straight Out of Patience Dad Life. There they are. This is a little tricky. So go back it, and I did a tutorial on just how to do this um, on ceramics. So it takes, it can take, one or two tries, um, but the good thing is, is everything can be wiped off really quickly and started over. You haven't wrecked anything, but it does take two hands. So make sure you have someone helping you hold that. Um, nail art, pretty simple. Just nail in your nails on the frame, or, or not on the frame, on the um, template that was on the block. So in all the holes, and then just um, tie your string to one nail and just start going from nail to nail and nail to nail, 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 until you have it filled like you like. So that's pretty simple. You'll do it. We've included a nail art in this and then one in our pet kit, which is the supplemental extra kit that you're able to purchase. So the garland also reversible for the dad part. So you can use those and these little floral go with the dad sign or put them in for both they work for both totally versatile okay i'm going to show you stenciling <clears throat> you're going to be stenciling a lot in this kit so this is a good one to start with but this is the mother's and father's day reversible sign happy mother's day goes on one side happy father's day goes on the other side so it's painted it's been painted um, white and it's ready to go Take your sanding block and make sure that you sand the surface that you're going to be painting. Okay, so it's really good sanded in there. It needs wiped off. So take a rag or something to wipe out that dust really super important that you keep that dust out of there and clean so cut your stencil to fit so make sure your stencil fits right in there and this one does so I'm ready to place it peel it off the backing you'll save this backing because you'll use it if you want to save the stencil you can stick it back on there after you wash it so we're going to place the stencil 
And I'm going to move it over just a tad. Thankfully, these graphics are not super square, which when things are really square, you can tell if they're not exactly perfectly straight. But here I'm smoothing it down really well. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my paints ready to go. So I'm gonna use just a couple colors to kind of accent in here. A little bit so the Mother's Day oh, up this. there we go that's a lot of green oops but I'm gonna use green in here and probably some gray I've made quite a mess on my paint tray but that's okay I'm gonna use gray for the words just make sure everything is pressed down good and you can't let the paint dry in your stencil. It will not pull out of the mesh if you let the paint dry. It will not stick to your wood, it'll stick to the mesh, and you'll be sad. So I'm painting here. Don't be afraid. Using too much paint isn't an issue. If you have a nice sanded wood base and everything's sanded correctly and good, there won't be any bumps, the stencil can seal correctly, and it doesn't matter how much paint is on the surface. So there's that first one. I'm gonna use this green and paint these green pieces. Oops, I might've got some green and the Y. I'm just going to go over right there. Okay, there's the green. And then just a tiny bit of pink. Just an accent. These little dots We'll go pink in the hearts. Okay, do not let it dry. Peel it right off right away. The easiest way to get these stencils out of this now would be to take an X-Acto knife and peel up a corner. And just peel right on down. And there's your finished stencil. So this can be washed. You can go put this in water, rinse it all up, get all the paint out of it, um, off of it in the mesh, everything, and then set it face down on a paper towel to dry or, to, or um, a towel. And once it's dry, stick it back on the backer. But that's how you paint the stencils. And you'll do that a lot, oops, for all the projects. Okay, I'm going to do the Father's Day one. Again, sanding. Sand, sand, sand. It's kind of nice we can do these double signs right away because the paint or the backside is protected. Okay. So happy Father's Day. Again, I'm going to cut the stencil to fit and make sure it fits right in there. Just makes it much easier to paint. A little bit over here. Okay. Place my stencil down and smooth it. If it's loose, it's going to bleed. If the surface underneath is loose, or, sorry, if it's bumpy, it's going to bleed. The amount of paint, the paintbrush you use, you do not have to have squeegees. I've had this discussion a lot. You do not have to have a special product, a special squeegee to make this work. It's not, it's not that. So, I'm just going to paint over this whole thing because the accent pieces are a little too close together. 
to get anything in there. You can tape off different parts of the stencil if you want to do accent, or I'm gonna do this one coat and then I'll show you what how to go in and do the accents. Ooh, got some chunks in my paint. Okay, now if I can see them, um, I can't see where I want to accent. Right there is a couple dots. Okay. So there's the couple of blue dots right there. So I'm gonna put some blue over those. Let's see, I'm just going over with a clear or a clean paintbrush, wiping that off a little bit. Here's some more blue dots. And I think there was a couple down here. Yep, right there. Just taking some blue, blobbing it on over the gray. There they are. They probably won't show up that much because they're not super contrasting of a color, but that's okay. Okay, again, the easiest way to get these out, take an X-Acto knife, peel up a corner, and just peel. And you can see the little gray, or little blue dots. Just a tiny bit different accent. So there is our reversible Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day sign and how to stencil. You'll be using that technique a lot throughout the kit. Number one thing, make sure your stencil surface is sanded prior to putting the stencil on and you should be good. Okay, here is the mom and dad jar. Stenciling on the jars is a little bit hard, but if you have someone to help you to hold it steady and you pull up on the stencil with two hands, it works a lot better. So get that stencil loose on each side and if you pull directly up to the center of the stencil, you can't drag it at all or else the paint smears. And even if it smears, that's okay because we can redo it easy enough. But I'm just pulling right up towards the center and voila, there you go. You can use any kind of paint. It's not gonna be able to be washable, um, but more than likely you're not gonna be getting this wet but if you mess it up, just wipe it off, wash this stencil, let it dry, and redo it. So it's not, it's okay if you have to do it twice. But if you have another set of steady hands to help you hold it, that works a lot better. Hey, summer succulent, oh my gosh. These are to die for, just the cutest. The little shoes were made just for us when we were making them. Um, I was like, let's do our flower on the top instead of a generic bow or something. I was like, we need the Project Home flower. So you won't find these anywhere else for sure. I like to just stick the little air plants, the faux air plants in there. Um, pretty basic kit, there's nothing super difficult. Uh, this little frame has the lines in it, a little trickier to paint, no, not a big deal, but as you can see, it bled just a tiny bit there. Honestly, you really can't tell, but if that does bother you, just take the white and clean up those lines and those gaps. But you're, you'll pop this piece out, put your stencil over it, paint your frame, and then stick that piece in once it's finished and dry. These guys, just paint your base. And again, the stipple technique for this top laser cut piece is the best way to paint these. And don't worry about the edging too much. Like honestly, it really doesn't 
it always ends up looking so good anyway. So don't stress yourself out about the edging. Um, not today, sucker. Just a basic framed sign. I'm a sucker for plants, and sometimes I wet my plants. Basic blocks. This, <clears throat> I should have decoupaged on the back, and I actually meant to. Looks like I forgot. But you can even decoupage on the back of these dudes too with the stencil or with the succulent paper. Um, oh, I don't have it right here with me. But these little boxes, just fun little doodads to set things in. So there's the summer succulent. Same technique as the 4th of July on how to fill your um, little shaker. Do your base layer, then paint your middle and your top and fill it. Okay, so we're gonna go around and do the next ones. Okay, I have the ceramic shoe for the um, succulent, summer succulent, and you just paint it. So go ahead and paint the whole thing. I'm not gonna worry too much about accents right now. Like this heel could be a different color, but I'm just gonna paint the whole thing and then I'll go back over it with accent colors. Same with the leaves. I'm gonna avoid the flower, painting the flower green, because the flower is probably gonna be pink. So I just don't want that dark green on there. Oops, I'm sorry. There we go. So just paint it over. This is not sealed ceramic, so it has not been sealed. It's still rough. It will take on water. So if you do actually use this for a planter, you will need to seal the inside of it. So using um, some sort of clear sealer to seal off that ceramic so it doesn't absorb water. Kind of like terracotta plants, planters, they'll absorb water. This is unsealed just like that. So if you're going to use this as a planter with real plants in it, you will need to seal the inside of it but fairly simple to paint. Okay, so there's my green. But I will probably just keep the air plants in them so I don't have to seal off the inside. There's that one. And then I'm gonna paint the second one. Let them dry, they dry quickly, which is pretty handy. You can put them in the heater they can be baked. If you have a kiln and do that, you are able to bake them. They can be kilned. Um, if you need temperatures, email our team. We can get those for you. These were made just for Project Home. As you can see, this is our little flower logo. So you won't find these little shoes anywhere else. How fun is that? That's the best part about our decor is it's yours and you have a one-of-a-kind piece. You're not going to find these at Hobby Lobby. Oops, shouldn't say that word. You're not going to find these at craft stores. Okay, there's my green. He's all painted. And I'll let it dry and then move on to painting the other colors, but super easy way to paint ceramic. Okay, 4th of July overview piece. These are your two by two blocks. Go ahead and paint them any color you would like. <clears throat> and then um, I, in the video, I show you how to use the dabbing technique to paint any of the lasered parts. So this little piece, um, any of the laser cut pieces, set them down on your paper and dab your paintbrush down in a stippling mode. Um, and that, coats those super well. For this, I used <clears throat> Mod Podge to put the glitter on. So any kind of glue, like Elmer's glue or anything, 
that you have, you can dab that on just like you would with the paint and then sprinkle your glitter over the top. And that's how you get those to stick. And then actually it, it's really handy to be able to take the Mod Podge. And I did it in the video earlier when I did the talk about <clears throat> on the um, Margarita Cinco de Mayo kit. Um, make a thin layer of Mod Podge or glue on your paper. And then if you take and just set these on it and pull them off, they'll be covered in glue on the back and then you can glue these on super easily. So there's the USA. This is just painted um, white first. So it filled in the lines and then very carefully just painted the red and blue and then glued the little firework crackles over it. They kind of burst off the edge a little bit. Um, fireworks, America, 4th of July, this laser cut block. We went through the decoupage technique on how to decoupage that. This watercolor type in the background is just um, de diluted paints and then just hand um, painted on to make that flag in the background. Super cute technique. Um, these little fluffs can just be placed around your tray. Um, you can glue them on the back of things, stick them drill holes, stick them inside those if you want make them like straws in these um in the cups if you want um you can add the little sunglasses on this for the from the stencil uh, these little guys just fill and then you can glue the lid shut if you need to just to, if they're going to be touched or even if they get knocked off the shelf which we know happens so much these little wicker stars are already done for you <coughs> For the um, shaker shapes, pretty easy to assemble them. So take your base, paint this your base color. So in this case, it's white, it's painted. Then paint your second layer and your top, okay? Your second layer, you're just gonna glue on. So Mod Podge would work great, same technique. Put a layer of Mod Podge on the table, press it down. It puts Mod Podge on the whole thing. Glue it together. You can also use hot glue. If you're not quick enough, hot glue will cool and then there'll be spacing and your little pieces could fall out. So the Mod Podge might be better. Then before you <clears throat> glue on your top piece and your plastic, fill with your charms in here. Put your plastic on and then glue over the top. So it's just like three layers of gluing. Very simple. Add your Velcro so you can swap them out on your little gnome sign, just like that. And let's see, these little dudes were done just by hand, the stars painted that. You can tape off the lines for fireworks. Just use any kind of tape. And here's a plain white one. You could do dots or something on that or Mod Podge it and put glitter on it. Oops. So that is a 4th of July kit. Pretty fun kit. Oh, this guy. It's meant to be reversible. So Party in the USA on one side, Born to Sparkle on the other side. It's framed out the same way on both sides so it can be reversible. So there's your 4th of July. Okay, decoupaging. So for mo majority of your pieces, they're easily double-sided. Um, and you kinda wanna double-side things because of tiered trays or um, you can see both sides of items from you know a 360 degree. So it's really nice to be able to double-side them. Um, decide what side of paper you wanna use. I think I'm gonna go with this. Just set your sign right on the paper, the same size. Line it up. I'm lining it up with these two edges. Take an X-Acto knife, cutting that, and then I'm gonna cut this side, just right along the side. Okay, paper's cut. Here's the paper. That's what I'm gonna use. And then now take this side, take your paintbrush with some Mod Podge or any kind of glue, and cover it. Really make sure that those edges are covered well because that's where your paper will stick out. I'm 
going away from the edge rather than pulling against the edge because then I'll have a puddle on the side. I don't want that. So just go all the way to your edges. Don't pull against the edge. Okay, now just smoothing it out. A nice smooth spot. And you can, again, decide what side you want. I'm gonna do this side and just stick it down like that. And then I like to just press it down on something flat. And keep it flat for a little while. Your paper might bubble a little bit, but what I really like to do is set it in some heat to allow it to dry. So I have, let me see, this small little heater right here that I like to turn on and that'll just give it a little bit of air, some heat, and dry that Mod Podge right up. Once this is dry, we'll sand the edges of it to kind of make it become one solid piece. Okay, I have the dried decoupage block. The paper is stuck fine, and now I'm just gonna sand the edges. You do not have to do this, but I feel like it just creates a fun finish to it. If you have any paper that went over the edge, this will sand it off. It kind of just makes it one part, become one part of the block. So there it is, sanded. So you can see just the little edges. These little dudes, I kind of want to take and put them on the side of the block. Right at this. I'm going to spread them out just a little bit. Kind of like that. Just to add some fun to the block. Take the hot glue. Just put it on there. Like that. Again, if you're going to touch hot glue, make sure you lick your finger. I just licked my finger, held it over it. It keeps it clear, stops any strings, and it cools it quickly. So super good trick to know. So there's the finished block for that. Fourth of July, again, this background is just watercolored on, so watercolor and then the stripes are painted. Pretty easy to do, Green or gray over the top and decoupage the back. So there's that one. For the little jars of glitter, just fill them with the remaining glitter that you have. You can um, glue the top cork if you don't want it to be opened up. Um, good idea if you have kids, don't want those jars to be opened. But take some jute for the little string. If you can string it through, uh, maybe, probably not, but if you take a tiny bit of hot glue, put it on that string, and then get your fingers wet, your pointer and your thumb, and roll that between your fingers. You'll create a aglet. If that hole is jammed a little bit, I'm just gonna rotate a little exacto knife in there. Kind of clear that wood out. Crafting's all about problem solving. If you see something that doesn't work, just figure it out. So I'm gonna take and use that aglet to string these. I'm gonna string them all at once, although they're not gonna be strung together. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cut these pieces separately and then we can tie them on the little jars like this. If they don't hang like you want them to, then just take a dab of hot glue and hot glue them down where you want them to hang. But I'm just gonna double knot it on the back of my double knot, put a little hot glue. If you touch hot glue, lick your finger, press it, keeps it clear, cools it quickly, it's dry, it's done. You can cut it. And I 
like how it kind of sticks off to the side on that one. So that was super easy to do. I'm gonna do it on this one. There we go. Okay, again, a little dab of hot glue, just a tiny bit. Lick your finger, touch it, press it down, cools it quick, keeps it clear. Cut your strings off. There's the second one. And the third. how to put those together again if you want put some hot glue on the cap so they can't be opened just in case for the kids um, we did double side this sign so it has born to sparkle on one side double sided sided party in the USA for this just um, water down your colors a tiny bit and this is all hand done there's your stencil for that. Um, I think that's all for right now for the 4th of July. Okay, I have a few of the 4th of July pieces here and I'm just getting ready to add the glitter to some pieces so it stays on well. I have my white painted. I'm using the exact same paintbrush I used for the white. And I'm gonna take Mod Podge, just a glue. You can use any kind of glue if you have um, Elmer's glue or any clear white glue and I'm just dabbing down like this right on each piece and this happens to be the matte Mod Podge um, it'll dry matte but my glitter I'm not going to cover I'm not going to paint over my glitter this is just going to be a base and the glitter will stick to this so do this just getting that glue in there nicely using the same paintbrush you don't have to wash it if you're just doing white paint not a big deal okay there's that I'm gonna do these guys the fireworks Red, white, and blue, one each, and these are all gonna be a mix. So, I wanna sprinkle, let me see, oops. Let me move this over, there we go. So I'm gonna do just this one white, sprinkle it on. There we go. And then sprinkle white on all of these, or silver. And do the red. If you want to conserve your glitter, do it in separate layers and then um, dump it off each time. And then blue. And the sky blue. Okay. Then I'm going to take it and just turn it around, press it down, and just make sure it sticks. If there's pieces that are weird, like see how there's too much here, I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. There we go. My white glitter, I'm running out of small tiny pieces so it is real chunky. Okay, that one worked. And these guys, all good. To attach them to your blocks, just 
just take your block and you'll just glue, take your hot glue and glue the back a little bit and stick it right on the block and you will be attached. The stars on the back of the mason jar, I need to paint my blue still, but you'll just attach those in different areas of it. Same exact way, just a tiny dab of hot glue and you're good. So that's how you do the glitter on the 4th of July.